Memphis pastor. Pat Pastor Dwayne Cardell. So hey, I want to just say thanks first of all to Pastor Craig and Debbie for giving me this opportunity. I am so humbled that our senior pastor and his wife have stayed so committed and faithful with spreading the good news. And God is doing amazing work here to Grace Family Church. Amen. And across the nation as well. We have mission trip that we go on. And so we love to say around here that family is our middle name. And so I got to share the message today with my Ebor family. But before I get into the text for today, I have to just I just want to have a conversation with you. How many of you have ever been disqualified from something? Have kind of felt unprepared and maybe too ashamed of your past? And so you felt that, man, I don't think God can really use me because my past is just really, really different and harsh. How many of you? Anybody out there? You can relate to that? Amen. Well, hopefully my message today is going to encourage you. And it's going to remind you of how God sees you. Because when those things happen in our lives, see, the lens of life can, be, can get so foggy. It can get so foggy that you can, you, you can lose sight of yourself because of crisis, because of situations. But how about this one? Have you ever hit that cycle of life, that season, when you're just making a stride? I mean, you look like you saw in Bolt. You're just striding. Your, your form is amazing. People are looking at you. You're doing great. Just to find out. The storm shows up and you end up in the ditch and you're like how, how did this happen how did I get here God and now you have some questions for God and you want to ask some conversation with God because you see one of the things is that we can get so focused on our plans that we forget that there's a God that has a plan for your life. Amen. I like the way how Jeremiah says it. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you. And he's not just talking financially. He's talking prospering in relationship, prospering in favor, prospering in knowledge, prospering in wisdom. To prosper you, not to harm you. But God, I'm in the ditch. I feel harmed right now. He's still in control. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Because here's the thing. Sometimes we land in the ditch and we're like a turtle on our back. Like we're moving, but we're not going anywhere. Oh, that's good. But my message today, I want to show you how God sees you. And I want to let you know that in spite of how you see yourself, God is still having a conversation about you. Do you believe that? Yes. I want to take you to a passage in the Bible, and we're going to be in the book, the text Acts chapter 9, but I want to take you to a passage in the Bible where we're going to lean in on a conversation that Jesus is having with one of his followers, Ananias, and he's talking about Saul. We first find out about Saul in Acts chapter 9, and we find out about Saul being mentioned at a crime scene. <laughs> the first time he's mentioned in the Bible, you get placed at the crime scene. <laughs> I don't think that's a good, good start, just to start with, right? But that's where we find Saul's first mention, is at a crime scene for the first martyr, Stephen, the first follower of Christ. He was there, he witnessed Stephen being stoned to death. I can't imagine what that looked like, what that felt like. But you would have think that a young man like Saul would have been disqualified from God's plan. Just like some of us are past, you may feel that, man, that has disqualified me from God's plan. But I want to remind you today that that's not how Jesus sees you. Amen. He's having a conversation about you because you're still his chosen instrument yes, to God. use, yes, to be used by him for his kingdom. And so here we have Paul, we have Saul picked up Mentioned again in, in chapter 8, I mean in chapter 9, Saul is, is on his road to Damascus. Saul has now developed a plan to not only destroy the church, but he wanted to persecute God's people. He did not want the gospel to be spread, so he set out on his way to Damascus, and that is where he had an encounter. He had an encounter that radically changed his life with Jesus. We find that in Acts chapter 9, and we could pick up the story here in Acts chapter 9. And I'll read the conversation that Jesus was having with Ananias. 
You can follow on the screens. It says, the Lord said, go over the straight street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Taurus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. But the Lord explained Ananias. I have heard many things about this terrible thing this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. And he is authorized by the leading priest. He is authorized by the leading priest. Authorized by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls upon the name. But the Lord said, listen what the Lord said, leaning on the conversation now. So, for God said, Saul is my chosen instrument Amen. to take my message to the Gentiles, to the kings, and as well as to the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. You see, here we have a conversation with Jesus talking to his follower, Ananias, about Saul. See, he had just saw, he had just saw the news last night. He had just saw Saul on America's Most Wanted. God, God, what was wrong? You're asking me to go pray for Saul? No, not that guy. I would report him and get the reward and I'll skip town. That's what I'll do. But sometimes God calls us and has chosen us to do the uncomfortable thing. And we got to be okay with that sometimes. Because again, you could have your plans and so focused that you miss the plan of God in your life. And so the title of my message today is, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. Yeah, you're chosen in spite of, you're chosen. You can clap for that. And I want to use that scripture in verse 16 to show you three thoughts that Jesus has about you. Three thoughts that Jesus has about you. Because how many times do you know that the enemy is having a conversation about you? But it's grateful to know that Jesus has not only a conversation, but he has a plan of redemption for you. A hope and a future for you. You know? So it says here, but I want to do this disclaimer real quick. So a little bit of my past is, I do have some dyslexia in my past. So I have to put things in certain ways so I can remember. So I came up with an acronym so we can all remember my points today for the message. Aren't you, aren't you guys excited? I have thought about everybody. <laughs> and so you, it's going to be I am a CIS. I am a CIS. I am a chosen instrument to serve. I'm a chosen instrument to serve. And so the first thing we find in Acts chapter verse 16 he said that I have chosen Saul. I have chosen Saul. And here's the thing about being chosen. You don't have to pick yourself. And the definition of chosen, actually the Greek word for chosen is eglego. Eglego. So I'm going to teach you a little bit of Greek today. Eglego. So here's how I remember that. Lego my ego. Lego my ego, egg lego. So you can't say Pastor Dwayne didn't teach you Greek or the Bible this morning, okay? <laughs> and so we find here, if I could read this verse and then we'll go into the whole point of being chosen. John 15, 16 said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and I have appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Go and what? Bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in his name, he will give it to you. See, just like Paul, you may have been known for one thing in your past, but that doesn't mean that God can't choose you for the next thing. But sometimes with us as individuals, we tend to want to pick people based on their abilities. But God picks us based on our disabilities. And that's the reason you can celebrate and know that you've been pre-qualified and not disqualified because God picks based on your weaknesses and your disabilities. And so here we have Paul with such a background that Ananias is freaking out and he's saying, I don't want to pray for him. Do you know his past? He might kill me while I'm not, I'm going to pray for him, but I won't close my eyes. How about that guy? Because I want to see what he's doing. Because see, Paul had a plan, but Paul's plan was never to prosper anyone. His plan was to harm. His one is to bring no hope and no future. That was his heart. But we serve a God that in spite of what the world has done to your heart, we serve a God that can change your heart. 
We serve a God that can give you a new heart, a clean heart, a renewed spirit. So that you can, you can walk out his plan that he has for your life. You see, the next thing about being chosen is that you just need to be available. God doesn't need your abilities. He needs your availability. You know, I could remember in my life when God had chosen me, it was about maybe two years into my marriage. I was married to a beautiful young lady. I'm still married to her too, by the way. <laughs> had a beautiful daughter in Guani. Yeah, it was good. Two years in. But here's why I spent a lot of my time on the weekends. I would spend it at my dinner table. Because I was asking God, is this the plan that you had set out for my life? See, my wife was a party girl. She loved to party. So she used to hang out probably three blocks from down here at Ybor City. <laughs> so I would be there Friday night, and I'm asking God, like, is this the plan that, that you had for my life? And it was a challenging time, I got to tell you. But you see, even in that time, I had to choose to believe that God said, I have chosen you. Because when I read the scriptures, he said, I've chosen you as an instrument. But man, I got to tell you, sometimes the pressures of life doesn't make you feel like you're an instrument. It doesn't make you feel like, is there really a plan for my life? So you have those conversations and those questions for God. And you're probably saying, Pastor, I hear you. Right now, I do feel like the turtle. I'm on my back and I'm moving, but I'm not going anywhere. Or maybe how about this? Maybe in this season, God has called you to be a stay-home dad. So you're not the breadwinner. And you know, if you know anything about a man or a male, we struggle in those areas of having to stay home and not being called the breadwinner because society has defined that we should go out and we should do the work. But in God's plan, it says two becomes one. So no matter if you're working or not, the whole thing is to stay in the oneness and that one accord and that unity with God. And you can get through these things. But we still... We're still humans, so you will still struggle through that. Or maybe you just got this recent promotion at your job. You finally got it, and now you're there, but the pressures of the promotion is just flaring up all your insecurities. Your insecurities are just popping out left and right. And you're like, I don't know, maybe I should have never applied for this position. I should have just left that alone. No, you gotta stand your ground and know that Jesus has chosen you in spite of how you define yourself and your situation. The next point I want to talk about, the second thought that Jesus has about you based on his conversation with Ananias, was that you're an instrument. He said, Saul is my chosen instrument. And the Greek word for instrument is ergolio. Ergolio. And the meaning for instrument is tool. I love that. It's so simple. It's a tool. And so when we, we just finished worship, right? And, and you look at all the instruments right now, they're on display, they're not being used. But just a couple minutes ago, there were all instruments that was being used and not being just on display. Right? But here, here's the tension sometimes for us. But in fact, let me do a little display, let me do a little segment for you guys. Maybe this will, maybe this will wake the crowd up a little bit. I've been working on this for quite some time. So if you know the song, you can sing with me. If you don't know it, just pray for me. All right, here we go. Gyro, you are enough. Come on. Gyro, you are enough. In every circumstance. It told you I need your help, brother. This is not working out. You pass the way, that's enough. You need to put that thing down. I hear you. I, I'm listening. I hear you. I put it down. I put it down. <laughs> I put it down. But but here's here's my point. Here's my point about the instrument. See, we want to be chosen and we want to be an instrument. But the tension is this: we want to decide when we get used, where we get used, how long we get used, who is going to use me. We that's where the tension is. Like. I know I'm chosen God, but, but, but the tension is, I don't want to be used over there. I don't want to be used. Here's the thing. If you don't choose to be used, you're literally going to be sitting on the seat, just like the instrument, just on display. You're just going to be sitting on display. I'm not, I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm just saying, God has chosen you as an instrument. Why not be used by him? And here's the thing. You might be saying, God, my, Jesus, 
My life is so broken. The good news is that he knows how to put broken pieces together. So don't you think he knows how to play a broken instrument? Come on. That's what our God does. He takes the broken things and he put it together. So you have no excuse to disqualify yourself. You have no excuse to say, man, I'm not effective. No, you are. In his hands, you are effective. Yes. And that's the conversation he was having about you that you don't even know about. But one of the things we have to do in Romans 12, 1, it says, Bese I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present, that you present your bodies as what? As what? As a living sacrifice. How? How? Holy, acceptable to who? To God. Not to me, not to the next, but to God, which is your reasonable service. I didn't say that, like Romans 12, 1 said that, all right? But that just reminds us that we should have a posture and a heart of humility, a heart to surrender our gifts and talents. Why would he place so many gifts and talents to just be on display? Because the power, the power is not in the instrument. The power is the one who holds the instrument in his hand. Yeah. I was not the most effective just now because I ain't got the power to hold that instrument in my hand. But if I put Antonio up here, you guys would have been, yeah, yeah. And all I got, was, that's all I got. But that was my best. That was my, that was my best, you know? But that's the conversation Jesus is having about you in spite of your situation. The enemy have his accusations, but God is working on a plan for your life. You see, the third thought that Jesus has about you based on the scripture in Acts 6, verse 16, it said that Paul is my chosen instrument. But he says, he will have to suffer for my name's sake. Yes. You will have to suffer for my name's sake. But one of the ways that you can get through your suffering is through serving God. Yes. One of the ways of how you can get through your suffering is through serving God. You know, I like, I like 2 Corinthians, how Paul described a moment here in 2 Corinthians 4, 9 through 12. He said, we were hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we were not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Yes, we live under constant danger. Yes, we live under constant danger of death because, because what? Because we serve Jesus so that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. In our dying bodies so we live in the face of death but this has resulted in what? For who? Me. For you. For me. For us. So your suffering is never going to be in vain because he has a plan for your life. He has a hope for your life. And there's a future for your life. But the sad thing is, we always want to try to avoid pain. We always want to try to avoid suffering. But suffering is just going to be a part of your life. It's just something you have to endure. So if you're going to have to endure the suffering, why not make it count? I don't know what it is that you're suffering through right now. But I would ask you to think about, what is God using this suffering for to prepare me for? Think about that. Because when you're suffering, you're so consumed and you're so focused on the pain that you're blinded by the fogginess of the lens of life. And so all you see is yourself in the ditch. That's all you see. And so you're having thoughts of feeling defeated, feeling not good enough, asking God why. Sometimes maybe you just, why not me, God? Why not me, God? Because when pressure hits something, it's ex it exposes what's on the inside. And maybe the pressure you're feeling is going to expose a new you you've never met. Wouldn't you like to meet a newer version of yourself? Yeah. I mean, wouldn't you like to meet a newer version of yourself? Yeah. I know I would. I try to meet him every day. Because every time I meet him, I notice 
that there's something new about my life. There's something new about the prospering, the blessing that God has for your life. But if you want to become something new, you got to do something different. So we will suffer. He said, I, he will suffer for my name's sake. You know, I mentioned a little bit about being married. I just came back from Jamaica. We celebrated 18 years, guys. We celebrated 18 years. 18 years we celebrated. And I got to tell you, I stand here and just as Paul, when Paul was chosen as an instrument, to serve God. He didn't tell him you would be a you would be an apostle. He didn't tell him that. He didn't tell him, oh, oh Saul, you're gonna you're gonna write 13 out of the 27 books in the New Testament. He didn't tell him that. He just told him in the conversation, why Saul, why do you persecute me? See, he came from a position of a conversation. I love the fact that we serve a God that's so gentle in his approach, but so radical in his change. Because he wants to see a better life for ourselves. You know, I just received a bunch of claps for the 18 years, right? But if you know you've been married for 18 years, there is a level of suffering that you got to endure. But where, where was the claps? Where was the claps at, at 3 a.m. in the morning when I was sitting at my table? My wife wasn't even a believer. She wasn't even following Christ. I was like, God, did, did I make a mistake, God? Many nights I'll be at my table waiting for her to come home. And she would come home not in the right state of mind, if you know what I'm talking about. And I would open the door and I would greet her with a smile. I would hug her, I would massage her feet, I would make her a cup of coffee and ask her if she was okay. At the same time, I had to take care of my six month old daughter. At the same time, I'm not working, so I'm staying at home, I feel like a prisoner. Suffering, pressure. And it's in that moment, the dark moment of my life when I felt like I was on my back. I was moving but not going anywhere. That God showed up and says, hey, I've chosen you to be an instrument to serve. Oh, where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to go, God? We have a lot of opportunities to serve in the church, but he was calling me to serve at home. Yeah. Yeah. See, sometimes we lose sight of the call of God. We feel like you got to be in full-time ministry. God has not called you to have to be in full-time ministry. He has called you to serve wherever you're at. You can meet a need. Amen. And I'll tell you, that's where I practiced my serving. It was right in my home. I pride myself in making the best Bottles for my kids and changing the most dirty diapers. I pride myself in those things. But you know what? Who knew that I was laying the foundation, preparing to see my daughter stand on stage and worship God? Yes. Look at my wife. She's on a front row. She's worshiping God. She needs, she, she needs the beautiful ministry. I didn't see that at 3 a.m. in the morning. So what I'm saying right now, your lens may be foggy about your situation in life, but can I encourage you to endure the suffering? Endure the suffering, my friends, because joy will come. The future will come. The hope will come. Those three o'clock in the morning was long because I myself struggled with pornography. I struggled with anger. So you could imagine what that scene looked like. It wasn't the most healthiest. It wasn't the most thing, the thing that I'm most proud about. But that was the hard press. God was squeezing, Glory. squeezing me, Glory. squeezing Glory. me. Yes. Yes. And now I'm doing much better. I'm like, you saw them both. I have a good stride. I have a good flow, a good plan. Not in my own strength. Jesus. Because I've suffered for a while. Yes. And I've made some changes in my life. And the biggest change I've made is to believe what God believes about me. Yes. That's the biggest change I've made in my life, to believe what God believes about me. And so I want to say this morning to you guys as, as I wrap up the message with some points. I have some questions. One of the questions is, where is God 
telling you to give up so you can go serve? Where is God telling you to give up so you can go serve? Second question I have for you is, what is God telling you to give up so you can serve effectively? Let me repeat that again. What is God telling you to give up so you can serve effectively? How about this one? Ponder on this thought. What has, what has your suffering prepared you for? And who can you help now that you've been to the suffering? Who can you help now that you've been to the suffering? How many of you would agree that Paul, I mean Saul turned Paul has been a great benefit to your life? Right? Do you read the scriptures, guys? I'm hoping you read the scriptures about this. I'm hoping you read God's word and hear what Paul has to say about you. Because at the same time, we're all, we're all broken in some form, some fashion. But the good news, let's clean up the lens this morning. Let's clean up the fogginess this morning of how you see yourself, of the situation you're in. And let's get better at leaning in on the conversation that God has. That's one of the things that you want to lean in on, the conversation that God is having about you. And not wallow in the pity of the adversity and the accusation that the devil has about you. Because you're always going to be like this. But my heart is that you would know that I'm a CIS. Can you say that after me? I'm a CIS. I'm a CIS. I'm a chosen instrument to serve. I'm a chosen instrument to serve wherever God's called me. And I would love for you to serve here at the church. We have many environments, but my heart just feels that you need to understand. I think you get better prepared to serve at home. Start serving at home. If you're married, start serving your spouse. If you have a family, start taking the time to serve your kids. If you have multiple kids, start putting them on a calendar and really spend intentional time with them. Practice your serving at home first before you come and try to put yourself on display. And watch what God will do in our lives. And so we're going to go into a song. A song that you're familiar with, the one that I butchered earlier. Jaro, you already know. I'm chosen. We're going to sing that. So can we stand to our feet right now? And I would love for you to just meditate a little bit about where is God calling you to serve?
I suffered, you suffered, but there was a man named Jesus. And his whole point of suffering on the cross was because he saw the joy that was set before him. He saw the smiles here this morning in the audience. He saw the dad that was struggling, that's growing into his calling of being a father and leading his family. He saw, he saw you. The question is, are you going to choose to believe who he said that I am? I am a CIS. I'm a chosen instrument to serve God. And at this time, as we come to a close, guys, our prayer team, can you come on up, prayer team? If you're here today, guys, and, and you have never accepted Jesus Christ in your life, and you're saying, Pastor, Pastor, I want to know this Jesus that had that conversation about me, that loved me so much, that his whole heart's desire is to see my plan shift from where I'm at to one of a hope in a future. That one day I could become a husband, I could become a wife, I could become a friend of someone with integrity, and I could serve in any capacity because I'm surrendering my heart with humility this morning. Maybe that's you this morning. Maybe that's you. Or maybe you're saying, man, I've ran away from God and I've just been on my back and it's been this crazy cycle, Pastor. I'm like the turtle, yes, I'm on my back and I'm moving, but I'm not going anywhere. You can decide to make a change today. Today, you can change the direction of your life by accepting Jesus Christ. So we're going to go into a time of prayer. And I'll say a prayer and you can follow after me. If that's you, you can pray this prayer with me. Can we all bow our heads? Father God, I ask for your forgiveness. God, I confess and repent of my sins right now. But God, I want you to come into my life. I choose to believe by faith today that Jesus is your son. And you sent him to be sacrificed just so I can have a new life in Christ. God, today, give me the gift of your Holy Spirit, God. So I can walk this new life out till eternity, till I see you again. In Jesus' name, all heads bowed. Don't lift your heads up yet, guys. If that's you, just raise your hand saying, Pastor, I'm recommitting my life or I'm giving my life to Jesus for the first time. Thank you. Thank you. Can we celebrate them guys? Come on, can we all celebrate? Being chosen as an instrument for God this morning. Hey, thank you guys so much for coming out. You can come on up for prayer. Whatever prayer needs you have, we're here to serve you. I always like to say that my prayer team are not ornaments. They're instruments to be used by God. Thank you for coming out. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Happy 4th of July. Take care. Appreciate you.